Hi there, I apologize if this is not going to be very coherent. Um, it is so cold in Fargo, and I don't feel like doing anything. It's March, and it's still like zero degree weather, and I, uh, this whole weekend I've just laid on my butt watching YouTube looking at conspiracy theories, looking into Pizzagate, which is about uh, Hillary Clinton and other people on the Democratic Party uh, being part of a pedophile ring. Um, I've just talked with my friends on chat. This, we, we, I have two friends who uh, I will chat with frequently, and uh, we discussed confirmation bias. And then I wrote a letter to God. I kind of do that often. I'll write a letter on my documents here. Letter to God. That's the title here. Letter to God. Pizzagate. Dear God, I have spent several hours looking into Pizzagate. I don't know what to think. My friends think I am crazy. <laughs> uh, I won't say anymore. But anyway, <clears throat> so confirmation bias. Um, I just wanted to say that I've been looking into this guy in Australia who claims to be Jesus. And um, I think the reason I like him so much is because he fits a lot of my confirmation biases. I don't know if that is a is a well used. Uh, I don't know if I, I'm using that term well, confirmation bias. But anyway, I want somebody to tell me that the stuff that I believe in has merit, and I'll tell you the stuff that this man in Australia, who I believe to be Jesus to some extent. Um, <clears throat> depending on the day and the mood I'll tell you why I'm, I'm listening to him <clears throat> so this guy runs uh, his own little company it's called the Divine Truth uh, Divine Truth is the name of the company and uh, he gives lectures around the world mostly in Australia um, he's been doing it f ever since he was 40 I think he's 54 now he has 14 years of material. Um, most of it is recent because he only started getting into video recording and documenting well through video his speeches. He's only got into that <clears throat> very well in the last seven years, I would say. Um, and I've watched a plethora of his videos. Just I've spent many, many hours watching his videos. And the reason why I like him is because of the following reasons. Um, he believes in a God. He believe, believes God is all good, um, all powerful. There is no other God except for that God, as far as he knows, as far as we know. Um, there is a spirit world. In other words, there's a place you go when you die. It's a lovely place. There's also darkness to it. Um, but unlike many Christian religions... Um, you can actually progress once you reach the spirit world. In other words, you don't have to stagnate. That's a big thing. Like, if if you actually go somewhere, if you go to the spirit world and you have to stay in hell forever, it doesn't seem like that's the workings of a loving God. Um, he says that we don't need to age and die. Now, that begs the question, how would we continue living <clears throat> in an overpopulated world? Well, he suggests that at some point, you may not want to continue living in your physical form. You may go to the spirit world at, at, at a certain point by your own choosing. So it might yet work out. But <clears throat> that's very big to me. Um, I don't understand why people age. I don't understand. I mean, I think we all have that burning question. Why do we get sick? When we get sick, you know, why is it at that time? What there seems to be a connection between the events in our lives and you know maybe feelings we have 
there, there seems to be, there, we seem to be part of this wider, the, the large web of life to some extent. And so I think that's a, the question on a lot of people's minds as far as disease. Like, people ask the question, why would God let someone uh, have a disease, like if they're a child, an innocent child, and they get a cancer of the blood that kills them? Well, so right there, you have to, um, you'd have to say that if you believe in a God, and if you believe that God has the power to make a decision as to the the occurrence of a disease, then you would have to believe that the occurrence of that disease has a reason. I don't know if I'm being very clear, but basically <clears throat> there's a difference between saying, you know, it just happened, it's random, and saying that <clears throat> there's a frog in my throat that uh, there's a reason behind it um, you can blame God you can blame the person you can blame the person's parents the kids parents um, there's a bunch of different people that you can blame or reasons that you can attribute the occurrence of the, the disease to but what I'm saying is there's a big difference between believing that there was a cause for the disease and believing that it just happened I think most people in their heart of hearts believe that diseases do have causes, but they're not willing to investigate what the cause is. Or if they are willing to investigate what the cause is, they're not really willing to look into themselves and what in their own nature might have caused the disease, as opposed to, you know, wanting to blame someone else or wanting to blame God. So I feel that this man in Australia is saying that uh, <clears throat> we don't have to have diseases. Disease, he says, is the result of sin. And in saying sin, he casts a pretty wide net. You know, sin can be, you know, just getting... Sin, sin like, I think we can think of punching somebody as a sin. Um, there's laws against assault. Um, we can think of... Cheating on somebody, committing adultery in a marriage, a sin. Um, I don't know, there might be still some laws, but they're not that punitary. Or they're not that bad in the U.S. But anyway, that's a sin, right? As far as religion goes. But there's other sins that he talks about. There's not believing in God is a sin. Not searching for God's love. Uh, not receiving the Holy Spirit, which he considers to be a, a mechanism of it's it's a tra it's a force of transmission of God's love from God to your soul is what the Holy Spirit is by His uh, reckoning. So there's all kinds of sins. Not liking yourself, uh, getting really peeved and angry and upset and frustrated at someone, and wanting to fucking do something about it and wanting to rah, wanting them to know, giving them the evil eye or the stink eye, you know, wanting them to know how badly you feel about them. What, what I'm saying is a feeling of rage inside of you that isn't uh, effectively performed, that isn't effectively manifested in your action, but yet is still this feeling that goes from you to that person, even that is a sin. And that is very amazing too because it goes down to, you know, the level of emotions and just the littlest thing can be a sin. And so he says all of these things are sins and they are what we can attribute our disease to they can we can attribute our aging and our disease and all and even events in our lives to sin is what he says and that's a pretty damn good explanation i i look at the world and i say that's one thing that people don't want to look at is what they have done so someone gets cancer um what did that person do everybody huddles around the cancer patient and tries to cuckoo them and and say oh i'm so sorry oh my god and uh, you know but no but people won't take personal responsibility 
<laughs> so yeah, that's saying a lot. But I think that's a very profound meditation, very profound concept to um, imbibe, as he would say. So, and and can you we we heal ourselves? Yes, if we can release our sin from the emotional level, if we can seek for God and and ask for mercy for our sins and ask for forgiveness from God, then God can help remove that sin from us. And the sin comes from a place of an emo emotional pain, a place of false beliefs. That's why truth is so important. So I am, as you can probably see, very energized by these ideas. And I've been following this guy for a long time. Sometimes I get really angry at what he says. I don't want to believe in him. I, I want to sh shut off the computer. Sometimes I slam, you know, this thing shut like that. And I want to th throw the computer out, especially because a lot. One time he said that he, he talks a lot about addictions, and he said that one addiction can be to watch too much Divine Truth videos, and that's me. So, so I guess <laughs> I'm engaging in a in a in a sin even by watching freaking videos. It's like, what the fuck do I do now? So, you know, I get angry about it, but. I guess I'm di digressing from the point of my video, which is to say that he's fulfilling my confirmation biases. Now, yesterday I watched a video where Alex Jones is on the Joe Rogan podcast, and it's a great show. Um, Alex Jones and Joe Rogan and uh, another guy, Eddie Falco or something, Eddie Bravo, I think, they, they smoke weed and they uh, drink alcohol, and they get in this kind of zen kind of like otherworldly mood and it's it's amazing the stuff they talk about but this is why i started looking into pizzagate i, I i'm i'm drawn to the alex jones three and a half hour discussion with joe rogan because i've looked into pizzagate and it's a very profound you know discussion that they have and they talk about the flat earth which is another thing that i believe and i think to myself you know i am waiting for these people I'm waiting for Alex Jones to confirm that the flat earth is real. And with everything that I like from Jesus, I want him to say that the flat earth is real. Um, I've been looking into urine therapy again, which is where you drink your own water, you know, uh, you piss into a cup and you drink it. And you take that as a regular practice and that's supposed to help you in some way. Um, I've never heard in all the time that I've listened to Jesus talk him ever talk about um, drinking your own urine. And I think to myself, you know, he's talked about so many things. He, he believes that 9-11 was probably, you know, a conspiracy. He believes in a lot of, you know, th there's a lot of ne nefarious conspiratorial things going on in the world. And I, I would say he'd be inclined to agree that that is the case. He said as much in a few times. And I'm waiting for him to say, you know, in addition to those things, that urine therapy is okay. And so I notice myself, I, 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 colloquially, I, I, I call myself like a fanboy because I'm waiting for him to say something to confirm it almost as a permission slip so that I can now do that thing. And I notice that that's wrong, that that's immature, but, you know, it's, it's the, I suppose it's what goes with, you know, following people to a point where you kind of lease your own agency to them. And I think that's what I'm doing. I think that's not good. And it's also a problem if I ever decide to leave, you know, the comfortable womb of these people and their belief systems and, and you know, just walk away from all of that because... I have a tendency by following them to such a degree and leasing, as I've said, my agency to them of just breaking down. I mean, what, what do I have now? What my worldview is shattered and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that needs to happen, but, um, yeah, I just feel like it's a mess and I've thought about stopping, you know, not, not following Jesus anymore because Maybe it is an addiction that I look too much at the YouTube videos. I mean, my, my life, I feel, is falling apart. And I'm, you know, 
I feel like it's a slow falling apart, but it is falling apart. But, you know, I, I, I need to take some initiative. I need to do something for myself. I need to go get something. I need to run for something and, and you know, do something big, I feel like. And I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm spending all my time watching YouTube videos. I, I get home after getting really tired at work. I feel exhausted all the time. And I eat a bunch of sweets to get me by. And, like, I'm... I don't know, like something's got to give here, and so, I don't know what else to say beyond all that, um, I wanted to share that, and like, maybe I'm wrong, I, I, I perfectly admit, I'm willing to admit that I could be wrong, and that these things, you know, following people is not good for me, but maybe, I don't know, who, who, who is right, is what, can I know what's right sitting at home watching YouTube all day? Went on for 16 minutes. Didn't expect it to be this long. I feel like there's one more thing that I got to say, but I don't know what that thing is. Something to close this with. I'm not... <laughs> it's funny how I think about how many subscriptions I have. I, I reached 11 recently, and I feel like People won't want to subscribe or will unsubscribe when I, when I say certain things. And, like, I have 11 subscribers. I saw someone, you know, I don't, I don't watch my own videos. I don't know how the view system works, but I had, like, 14 views on a video once. And I'm like, how can 14 people be watching my stuff? And how much does what I think my subscribers want to see fit into what I want to say? And I think if I ever go there, if I ever try to listen to people and what they want to hear, that's when I, that's when I just give in. And that's another way of losing my own agency, is uh, <clears throat> doing what other people want me to do. And why I fit that into this, I forget. Fuck. But it's a part of the puzzle. Maybe I'll remember 10 minutes later and I'll write a comment about it. But, oh yeah, I guess I want to say that I don't end my videos with...